everyone, this is uh, Imperator. Um, for today's video, I was just gonna cast um, a recorded game I played on multiplayer um, a day or two ago. Um, this was my, actually my first online battle in Medieval 2 ever, despite having played it you know since it came out years ago. Um, so, um, just one quick note. I will, there will be this exploit game caster watermark in the next few recordings. Um, I'm trying to decide on a recording software. Like I was working on the OBS, but it seemed like kind of a pain, and I was having some issues with older games like Rome One and Medieval Two when I was recording. Uh, so I'm just trying this out, and I want to um, try out a few times at least, maybe for a couple of weeks before I. Um, pay for the license for it. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's just kind of go over the army matchups. And so let me run down the speed a little. So I'm playing as Venice. Um, this is my first online game. We did no unit restrictions of any type, so I have quite a few musketeers. You can see there in their pants. Um, I went pretty heavy on pikemen since my opponent was playing as the French. And I was expecting a lot of cavalry, and I also have a nice complement, our nice contingent of Venetian heavy infantry here with their nice armor-piercing hammers and you know shields, pretty heavily armored. Morale could be a bit higher on them, but other than that, they are. I mean, in spite of that, they are a great A unit. Also brought two culverins. I'm um, kind of dictate how this battle is going to play out with those long range being able to hit them almost anywhere on the map and then the Stratiots um, I have like four of them which is probably frowned upon because they're just so cost effective and so overpowered for what you pay for them that um, they definitely help give Venice an edge in a lot of matchups um, and then you know just as I already said a lot of pikes because they're cheap and I expect a lot of cavalry um, for some reason, my opponent only brought um, two units of gendarmes, which you know are kind of overpriced for what you get, especially given that they don't have um, shields. So in prolonged melee or against um, archer fire, fire, they will suffer. But if we can continue going through my opponent's army, he has. Dismounted Noble Knights here, um, you know, pretty solid strike infantry, he has Pike Militia, a good deal of Pike Militia, Dismounted Feudal Knights over here, and let's just move on over, and yeah, so, pretty cool, and then he has, um, Two Volgier units over here and three Aventuriers, which are you know, definitely solid units. He has his general's bodyguard. And he also brought artillery, although just one basilisk, which um, it's you know the most expensive artillery gun that the French have access to. It's maybe a little overpriced. I don't know, I feel like with my two culverins I definitely have an edge on him. I know I pay a little bit more for that, but um, I think having two cannons really kind of forced his hand into taking the initiative and oh yeah he did bring his I think he just forgot about his cavalry or wasn't paying attention to them I don't know if he's AFK because he left his two units of gendarmes and wedge formation just kind of standing here so I said okay I've moved over my strategies over there and just annihilated his cavalry so for the rest of the game I'm gonna have um you know, more mobility, the ability to cycle charge, which he's really not going to because his only cavalry unit left is his general. Um, so yeah, the Scotty Outs, like a lot of them took a, took a beating. Um, I lost a lot of numbers there. <coughs> like, Bounce Power still in his favor, and I lost 6% of my army um, charging down his Lancers, but they're gone, they're out of the game. He has no cavalry besides his general, and yeah, I'm happy with that trade any day of the week. Um, he does move his general up here, maybe to try to flank me, um, but yeah, he just doesn't have the cavalry numbers to really do anything, especially given that I can just fan out my pikes, have my general here. Um, he's not going to get at my artillery, which is what I think he's was angling to get, do. 
Um, so I think another mistake he made after um, sending his cavalry out here is he kind of sent his army out in a uneven distribution. Um, and it's just, I forgot to mention, for those who are wondering, it was just a 10,000 floor in game. Um, I just went with the default since my first playing time playing online. Um, I felt kind of bad during this battle, just using this artillery and sort of camping and making him come to me because I had more artillery. And and the next, I, I played another match with him and I didn't bring any artillery to cut or gunpowder to kind of compensate for the fact that maybe um, I was a little exploitive in my army composition in battle. And yeah, his general's down, and yeah, so we'll just fast forward the battle because it's really shaping up to be, despite the balance of power and being evenly matched, I think with my cavalry, artillery, gunpowder, superiority, and then this Venetian heavy infantry, given what he has left on the field, uh, he could have, um, he's going to have a hard time getting back in this game. So I made a little mistake there. I did not pull my musketeers back. I should have probably pulled them out and around so I could fire into the Volger or the Aventurius. So that was just an oversight on my part. Um, so I'm going to bring in some Pike Militia to flank them. Um, the Volger, he's starting to route. I've already routed one of his Volger. Um, and that's kind of like bringing in your units unevenly like this, is I can shift my entire line and just flank. Um, and again, he's going to have a hard time reacting just because of, um, you know, he has no cavalry, and I do, and a lot of his infantry was pike militia, and they are going to get just absolutely slaughtered by these Venetian heavy infantry. Plus, I saw the Stradiots around for cycle charging, and while they're not the best chargers, you know, they're not like noble knights or lancers or anything, they still have, I mean, they're still cavalry, they can still charge in, they can still hit those morale hit the morale with flanking and rear charges, so um, definitely feel pretty confident. His aventuriers are probably, this is something I should have addressed, I sh maybe should have split out my Stradiots. I kind of wanted them, especially since he had no cavalry, I kind of liked keeping them in like a death ball and just moving around the battlefield and just like taking out his infantry one by one. Um, yeah, because I guess my thought process was that once I take out all of these dismounted feudal knights, um, dismounted noble knights, there's really nothing his, uh, the aventurers, like, they're comp they're really good in melee for an archery unit, but there's no way they're going to stand up to Venetian heavy infantry and Stradiots once they get over there. Um, so yeah, you know, it's just kind of cleaning up, um, balance power starting to shift, only half um, the enemy force remain. And I think now it's probably becoming apparent to him that this is not going to end the best. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think, I'm not sure about the skill level of my opponent, how often all he's played. Will be um, by or if he was AFK for a second when he made today. that, uh, when he made that kind of mistake at the front where he, at the beginning of the battle where he put his two um, gendarme units right up on my flank exposed and didn't move them when I charged in with my Stradiot, so I think that's where he lost the battle and it was really hard to recover from losing that much gold and that much maneuver maneuverability in those units. Um, but I, I think he should have just gone with like Noble Knights or Chivalric Knights or something like that if he's going to spend that much, amount, of, amount of money on cavalry. Um, so if you can so we'll just look over the kills real quick. General's bodyguard, pretty decent. The Stradiots, they did decently. They, were, Their main role was to get rid of those gendarmes and then move on to breaking morale with cycle charging, and they did a good job of that. Um, the Culverins, um, oh, sorry, casualties inflicted this column. The Culverins, you know, they did all right. Really, they were just there to force his hand, and they did that role perfectly. Um, the Venetian Heavy Infantry really did work. Like, only one of them was just shy of triple digits. That's a shame. They almost all had triple digit kills. <laughs> 244. They just massacred those pikemen. Such a good unit. Such a good cost effective um, unit. 
Uh, Pike militia, they just held the line for the most part. Musketeers did some damage. I did not use them correctly this battle. I'll go ahead and say that. Um, but yeah, that was pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed just the final highlight. A clear victory with 2,031 men deployed. We lost 833 with 1198 remaining. He had 1891. Uh, 1,891, he lost 1,709, 182 remaining. Um, so I had a bit more men than he did. And I think that comes down to him spending more on the Basilisk and his cavalry options, as well as a lot on... He had a lot of heavy infantry. Um, so yeah, it would be interesting how the battle would play out if he'd kept his cavalry alive, but um, that's it. And I'm going to post the next game where I played the same opponent and went with i think a less exploitive army build but yeah i hope you enjoyed this video if you have any comments uh, want to tell me i suck at this game anything like that uh, just feel free to drop it below thanks